So I don't think most people realize how at least the American diplomatic world works. And I'll just give a quick rundown to see if I understand it. My uh, sense is that there is a bureaucracy which people can apply to. They get a regular job. They take some tests and they can go up through the diplomatic world where they could be anything from being a passport agent at an embassy to um, being somebody that specializes in something like USAID. And then there's another component, which is the uh, the appointed side of the ambassadorship, which is to say, you have a new president, Donald Trump. He now gets to come in and say, I want somebody that is going to be my voice in the rest of the world. Is that an, an accurate representation of the diplomatic world? I would say it's it's, it's very close to it. You know, I, I, I want to take and, and say thank you to all the many people that are in a foreign career service that chose to represent the United States around the world and in the United States, uh, uh, making that career path where they go through the process of continual education and make sure that the United States is represented, whether they're serving in a mission in Chiang Mai, Thailand, or Rome, Italy, or uh, Bogota, Colombia, uh, we need to have good representation everywhere. And the United States does this best in class of, of most uh, countries around the world. As far as the political appointees like myself, uh, yeah, it was an honor to be chosen by the administration and serve our country. But uh, in the role that I served in was very bipartisan, one that would Democrats and Republicans alike understood the importance of food security and uh, making sure that the U.S. voice was being heard there. So uh, it was an honor for me to serve our country and uh, continue to look for other ways to serve it as well in the future. So you show up in Rome you're a guy that's been a farmer. You've been involved in politics in, in the United States. What is it like? Are you prepared for the world that you're about to enter four years ago when you're appointed? Well, first of all, I had never been much of a part of politics till probably about 2015. I did uh, never ran for office in my life. I did run for, for U.S. Congress in 2015, 16, and uh, you know, lost by a few points. And uh, we've got a very good person serving in that role today. Uh, but this opportunity came up uh, about a year and a half later into the administration, understanding that uh, we had a vacancy uh, in this role, and it was an honor to go there and serve. Uh, in terms of understanding what to do, you know, the, the United States does a really good job of taking political appointees and educating them with the process. What's expected of an ambassador? You know, what is the protocol? Um, how do you represent yourself in the public? How do you represent yourself when you get into policy meetings? And understanding sometimes you're gonna be on one-to-one -one meetings with maybe a leader of a, a, a different country from around the world. Could be a prime minister, could be an ambassador. How do you best represent our opinions, our views, and making sure that uh, we do the right thing for diplomacy? So. Uh, they have what's called ambassador school. A lot of us always think that, uh, or we, I had the misconception that it was more about protocol, how to pick up your spoon, how to place your silverware, how to, you know, greet people, things like that. Wasn't part of it at all, actually. It uh, got into a lot of the components of how to behave as ambassador, how to expect what's expected of us once we come to mission as we interact with other diplomats from around the world. And it was a very helpful course to go through. Lasted about a month in Washington, D.C. for most of it. But uh, what did I, you I, learn that you didn't uh, expect? Excuse me. What did you learn that you didn't expect during that class? <sighs> you know, I there weren't, weren't any really big surprises because I was wide open. I, I, I think the one thing that probably set me back was the uh, the amount of bureaucracy that's involved in either onboarding to go serve in this role or what I'm doing right now, going through the bureaucracy of uh, uh, removing myself from you know, United States government service. So uh, that's the one thing I probably didn't expect enough or understand enough about. But uh, the diplomacy, listen, I, I think you would be a good diplomat, obviously doing what you do, you're used to interacting with people and talking with them and uh, listening to their side. I think you always have to seek first, understand, and then to be understood. And I think that's a big part of diplomacy. You know, I'm really excited to talk to you because I have a lot of respect for you. You're very well respected in the community. And my observations about the diplomatic corps. So I went to international relations school. I ended up working at the World Bank. I was in the Peace Corps. I traveled around the world. My observation is that if you live in that uh, diplomat world for too long, you end up actually being in an entirely different culture. You, you live in a, in, a, in a strata at society along with other world leaders 
that are living entirely separate from from the rest of the world. So I have always had a bad since since I was in Africa and I watched embassy parties happen. I've had a bad taste in my mouth about the diplomatic corps. What are your thoughts? Did you see things there that you were like, ooh, th- these people are not, they've been away from the United States for too long? Yeah, you do see that. I mean, that, that's obvious. And it, it comes out, it manifests itself in different ways with different individuals, right? It's, we're all as human beings, we respond, we react, we accept things in different ways. I would say this is, a, I always want to remember where I came from. Uh, my beginnings in my life of growing up on that small farm and and then thinking back through before I would make decisions or before I would make comments, I would say to myself, how does this impact uh, a farmer in the United States or how does this impact, impact our ecosystem of agriculture across the country at the same time? focusing on those that are food insecure around the world and try to try to come to a consensus that we can satisfy both. One thing for certain is I run into a lot of these career diplomats, especially in Rome, because it's such a technical nature. I mean, we've got, we're dealing with the World Food Program, the Food and Agriculture Organization, EFAD, International Fund for Agricultural Development, IDLO, the International Development Law Organization, UNADRA, which does uh, public law, and then, excuse me, private law, and then we have ECROM, which teaches or helps with the cultural preservation around the world. Of course, most of the focus is on WFP, which is the, you know, the largest of all the UN agencies, but the largest one we deal with as well. Then the Food and Agriculture Organization and then EFAD, which does the financing for smallholder farmers and some commercial enterprises. But what you find out is in the diplomatic core, you get a lot of people from different nations around the world. They can't respond to a lot of the, the questions or the technical nature of things that come in front of us. And you always get this comment, I need to refer back to capital before I can respond. And then a few day, days later, you get a response where we knew what we wanted to say. We knew what our mission was and we were very reactive. We were very we were able to get our our message across the line and communicate it clearly to a lot of people. Now, did we find a lot of consensus of people agreeing with us? I would say this is where your challenge in diplomacy comes in is, you know, obviously we have a lot different view in the EU Green Deal Farm to Fork Initiative than we do U.S. or our Argentine or Brazil or, or Australia, New Zealand or UK agriculture. We're kind of at odds with the EU. So it's, it's trying to find that middle ground. Where can you find consensus and build that bridge to make sure that you have food systems that are successful? And uh, unfortunately, we get a lot of debate in Rome. So this is where diplomacy comes in. Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you like this interview, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast. And if you're really interested in conversations like this, you may want to consider joining the Articulate Ventures Network. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures.